This video has been specifically produced for the use of novices as part of the East Midlands School of Anaesthesia teaching programme. The following principles relevant to rapid sequence induction will be covered. The indications and principles of rapid sequence induction, its preparation of the equipment required and the drugs used, preparation of the patient and the application of cricoid pressure, and the procedure itself. Rapid sequence induction is a technique used for induction of anaesthesia for a specific group of patients, grouped under the heading of full stomach. At the induction of anaesthesia, the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes, which for patients with full stomach puts them at risk of potential regurgitation and aspiration of stomach contents. These patients include non-fasted emergency cases, acute abdomen, pregnant women of more than 20 weeks gestation, patients with diabetic autonomic dysfunction, patients with delayed gastric emptying as occurs with gastric outlet obstruction or use of drugs such as opioids and alcohol, patients with a large hiatus hernia or active positional gastroesophageal reflux, patients with an increased body mass index. A rapid sequence induction is carried out for these patients in order to achieve rapid induction and intubation, limiting the time during which the patient is at risk of regurgitation and using cricoid pressure to actively reduce its occurrence. Preparation of equipment. Firstly, the anaesthetic machine must have been checked in keeping with anaesthetic association guidelines, including the provision of full monitoring. This includes the availability of a self-inflating bag in the event of anaesthetic machine failure. The trolley used for induction must tilt into the head down position to allow for application of this position in the event of regurgitation until the patient can be suctioned and intubated in order to reduce the level of aspiration accordingly. The equipment required for the process of intubation should be available and will include a face mask with angle piece and filter, two working laryngoscopes of different sizes, such as a max size 3 and 4, with alternative blades available in the event of difficulty, such as a McCoy blade or a video laryngoscope, typically kept on the difficult intubation trolley available just outside the emergency theatre. Varying sizes of endotracheal tube with a syringe for adding air into the cuff attached to the balloon of the tube, oropharyngeal airways, as well as a laryngeal mask as a rescue device. A bougie to facilitate access into the trachea, McGill's forceps, lubricating jelly, and a tube tie for fixing the endotracheal tube in place. The commonly used drugs used for rapid sequence induction are thiopentone and succinamethonium although alternatives such as propofol, ketamine and rocuronium are also used. Thiopentone is available in a yellow powder as 500 mg in a single vial, which is diluted into a 20 ml syringe with water for injection, to a concentration of 25 mg per ml. The dose is 3 to 5 mg per kilogram. Succimethonium is a refrigerated clear solution with a concentration of 50 mg per ml, drawn up into a 2 ml syringe to a total of 100 mg. Its dosage is 1 to 2 mg per kilogram. A 10 ml syringe containing normal saline as a flush should also be available. Emergency drugs should also be available in case of patient compromise, including glycopyrrolate and atropine, vasoconstrictors such as ephedrine, phenylephrine or metaraminol, as well as adrenaline available in the red emergency drug box in every theatre. The patient needs to be placed into the optimal sniffing the morning air position in order to facilitate the process of intubation. Monitoring should be attached, including ECG, oxygen saturation and starting blood pressure, as well as the availability of end tidal carbon dioxide. Intravenous access should be established with fluids running. Suction should also be on and placed under the patient's pillow, ready to hand and close to the patient. 
a third person is also required to act as a runner in the event of a critical incident to get help. Cricoid pressure. The application of cricoid pressure needs to be carried out by an appropriately trained member of staff, typically the ODP, and an explanation of what this means for the patient given to them beforehand. Cricoid pressure involves identifying the cricoid ring and applying such pressure. Identification can be aided by asking the patient to swallow. This pressure starts at 10 newtons in the awake patient, with 30 newtons being applied as the patient loses consciousness. As part of training, to ensure that the appropriate pressure is obtained, weighing scales can be used, with 1 kilogram force applied to the scales equaling 10 newtons, and 3 kilogram force equaling 30 newtons. This amount of pressure needs to be maintained throughout the intubation process until the endocrineal tube position is confirmed by the anaesthetist and they instruct their assistant to remove it. Alternatively, a 50 ml syringe can be used with the tip capped off. Applying pressure to the air-filled syringe and pushing the plunger from 50 ml to 34 ml is equal to the application of 30 newtons of pressure. The rapid sequence induction procedure. Preoxygenation needs to be carried out prior to induction with the application of the face mask to ensure an adequate seal. This is carried out for either three minutes or five full vital capacity breaths, but the ideal is to achieve an end tidal carbon dioxide trace on the monitor to confirm gas analysis and the subsequent achievement of an end tidal oxygen level of greater than 90%. Cricoid pressure can then be applied at a pressure of 10 newtons and induction commenced. This involves the administration of a pre-calculated dose of induction drug with a flush of saline and the immediate administration of a paralysing agent. If using succinophonium, vesiculations will be evident as its action commences. If not, a period of 45 to 60 seconds is required before intubation can be carried out. Once the trachea has been intubated, air needs to be placed into the cuff of the endotracheal tube to ensure there is no leak around it, ensuring that no aspiration can occur. The position of the tube is then confirmed with equal chest expansion and with the presence of a minimum of five cycles of carbon dioxide. Following confirmation of position and the lack of leak, the anaesthetist then instructs their assistant to remove the cricoid pressure and the endotracheal tube can be fixed in position with the tube pie. The vaporizer must be turned on in a timely fashion to avoid awareness following redistribution of the intravenous drugs. A longer acting paralyzing agent also needs to be administered as the succinophonium wears off. A five point check to ensure bilateral equal air entry and the absence of air entry into the stomach should also be carried out. A blood pressure should be carried out to ensure patient stability. In summary, this video has covered the procedure of rapid sequence induction, 
used in order to protect patients from aspiration. We have highlighted the preparation of the relevant equipment, drugs and preparation of the patient, as well as noting the staff required, the use of cricoid pressure and the demonstration of the actual procedure. Many thanks for watching.